YouTube team, keep it clean. Sorry to interrupt your uh, national kickoff day for the NFL, but this news just got confirmed. Even We expected it, but now it's like official, official. Um, Adam Schefter just let us know. Test confirmed that Ravens cornerback Marcus Peters suffered a season-ending torn ACL at today's practice per source. And then he tweeted the exact same thing for Gus Edwards. 16 minutes later, he said, test confirmed that Ravens' Gus Edwards suffered a season-ending torn ACL at today's practice. Man, um, when you just reading it, like, it just brought up that feeling how, how we felt earlier, man. Like, it was just like, ah, jeez. It, 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 it was a, it's such a big blow. These are two huge blows to the Ravens. Um, Gus Edwards... Again, undrafted rookie free agent in 2018, came through, put in the work, showed out. Then, of course, 2019 was a big part of that. And then last year was still a big part. And, and this year, oh, it's just wild, man. And it's crazy. I was just talking to my guy, Kevin, and he brought out the point that the Ravens, they have not, on this year's roster, they will not have any running backs that carried the ball for them in 2020 on the roster. Zero, none, nada. And they have lost all, all three of their, their top three running backs. J.K. Dobbins, Justice Hill, then Gus Edwards. And you got to feel for these guys, even not, not even as a fan. Take the fan part out, but you got to feel for them as men. Because this is their means. This is their job. These are their careers. And they're obviously still getting paid for this year and whatnot. They stay under contract. But at the same time, this can mess with your mentals, man. This can mess with your mentals big time because you could start thinking because you know the NFL stands for not for long. You know that. We know that. It stands for not for long. And you know, I'm sure everything is going on in their heads. Um, thinking about possibilities with the Ravens, how are the Ravens going to move, possibly thinking about how the Ravens are going to do in their absence uh, and how that's going to affect their future with the team. It's just so much stuff that if it goes on in our heads as fans, then, you know, in their heads, it's, it's probably just 20 times worse. And right now, some of, the, some of the worst and most frustrating situations are the ones that you literally can't do anything about. Gus Edwards, again, torn ACL, he can't do anything about it. J.K. Dobbins, uh, Justice Hill, they can't do anything about it. And there have been just so many injuries with the Ravens this year. But, th see, the thing with it was that we were like, we were trending up. There was a part of the offseason where we were trending up. We had got different injuries. Marlon Humphrey had the groin injury. Jimmy Smith, he had the what the low ankle sprain. Rashad Bateman, he had the, the groin abdomen injury. Um, and, and there was Sammy Watkins, he had an injury. Hollywood had the hamstring. Miles Boykin had the hamstring. Deion Kane had an undisclosed injury. The list was crazy. But the thing about it was that, hey, okay, yeah, these guys got injuries sucks but they weren't long-term injuries they weren't season-ending injuries it was like okay they'll be out a, a week they might be out two weeks they'll, they'll come back but no now all these guys are just getting put on uh injury reserve um and marcus peters too he's gonna be there as well and this i think marcus peters uh is even a, a, an even bigger blow than Gus Edwards. Gus Edwards is a very, very big blow, but I think Marcus Peters is an even bigger blow because now, excuse me, this changes the way that you play defense. This, this, this changes the way that you play defense because with Marcus Peters, you know what you were getting out of him. You know, he, he was going to give up some plays, yeah. He was going to certainly make some plays too, though. You knew that for sure. And that was the style of cornerback that he is. He's a risk taker. Definitely a risk taker. Sometimes it paid off, sometimes it didn't. When it didn't pay off, it's like, oh, man. When it did pay off, it's like, oh, man. But now you don't have that at all. Now his season is done. It's over. 
It's over. And I told y'all it, it hit that much more because we were just literally, literally listening to this dude talk about how much he loved it with the Ravens. Loved it. He talked about how he noticed when, when he was with the Rams and they had the joint practice, he noticed that the Ravens, they just, they, there was this bond, man. That team bonding. And he said they did that with the Rams. He said with the Chiefs, they, they needed to do that a lot more. They didn't do it enough with the Chiefs. But he talked about the, the, the bonding that the Ravens do. And just when you hear this guy speak, you could tell he loves football. Loves it. And now... The one of the things that he loves the most is taken away from. Taken away, just like that. They said it was a routine drill, just like that. It's over. It's over. It's done for the year. And then, um, not not only this year, and we talked about how it can mess with their mentals, but then you got to think about next year too. Like with this, there is no good time for an injury, obviously. But in these guys' cases, their season-ending injury is happening right before the season is even starting. So it does give them time, extra time to prepare and heal for next year. Um, but then you got to hope it's no setbacks with that. And I mean, with doctors nowadays, especially NFL doctors and the surgeries and whatnot. I mean, Adrian Peterson taught us this lesson long ago that... Even for a position where you jump cutting and doing all that stuff and you really moving like that, it it can be done and, and you can come back quick. But is everybody Adrian Peterson? That guy is a freak of nature. Uh, and the fact that he's still playing, I know he's a free agent right now, but still, he ain't retired. So he's just waiting on a phone call. Um, but you, you got to hope that these guys can bounce back and it's a smooth process when they do bounce back. Um, but we are definitely rooting for them to bounce all the way back. Um, but this is just, it's, it's rough, man. It's rough. Uh, this does put more pressure on the Ravens' offense. This does put more pressure on their defense, too, obviously. But as far as the offense, uh, because you expected J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards and Justice Hill to be to getting some significant catches out of the backfield, too. Um, obviously, they were going to be doing their thing as runners, but they were going to get more involved in the passing game, too. This really forces the Ravens to up the passing game that much more. So they they got to be on it, man. This is this forces them to really make some serious adjustments. Now, you did bring on Devontae Freeman and Le'Veon Bell. They're currently on a practice squad. They could be game day call ups. Because, what, you can call up two people from the practice squad, or they may add one of them to the roster, keep the other one on the practice squad, or add both to the roster. We'll see. But I expect both of them to play this coming. Well, I expect both of them to be active this coming Monday. Both of them. Because you, like with Le'Veon Bell, you could have been, oh, well, maybe he'll play. Yeah, nope, not no more. You, you ain't got no maybe roster. So, yes, Le'Veon Bell will get called up. He will get called up. Um, and Devontae Freeman, yeah, same thing, man. Same thing. Uh, now, Trent Cannon, oof, that, that, that speed that he has is, is going to be needed. It is going to be needed. Uh, whether it be special teams, whether it be offense, whether it be whatever, as a gunner, that speed is going to be needed and it's going to be used. I mean, they, they put him straight on an active roster. They ain't even play no games with him. And again, I, I thought it was going to be flip-flop. I thought, okay, they talking about this Trenton Cannon guy. Oh, and they talking about Le'Veon Bell, too, and Devontae Freeman. If they sign one of them veterans, they go into the active roster. And Trenton Cannon, yeah, he go to practice school. Nope. Ravens said, nope. Uh-uh. Active roster Trenton Cannon. You on. So whatever his role is, he will have a role because he's on the team. Um, with Lamar Jackson, I, I've, I've seen a lot of people talk about how, man, Lamar Jackson definitely going to have to be Superman now. Hopefully, hopefully, yeah, hopefully he's still making Superman plays, but hopefully he doesn't have to do it all. And hopefully other guys step up too. He can get other guys involved. And really, I, I just, I, I really, really want to see that impact of T. Martin and Keith Williams. I really want to see that impact 
of Greg Roman actually having an off season again. Because again, we're back in 2019, I remember having a conversation a lot of times on here. After that season, like, okay, Lamar went 36 and 6, killed it, obviously, and they killed themselves in the playoffs, but regular season absolutely just destroyed it. But I talked about how, all right, where do you go from here? And I, I really wanted them to evolve in the passing game. This was before all the, uh, the, the Greg Roman, the passing concepts and all that, and the, all the Kurt Warners and Steve Smith seniors and, and everybody getting on. This was way before that. We, we would always say we want Greg Roman. How is he going to evolve now? What's next? What's next? How do you follow that up? And then the offseason got taken away. So hopefully that was the reason why things didn't take that next step forward. Um, the history with Greg Roman, it will say otherwise. But, hey, hopefully history is rewritten this season with these Ravens. Because they have, even with the losses, and it's been some tough losses and a lot of losses. But even with the losses, they still have a chance to do something special. Even with Marcus Peters out, unfortunately, even with Gus Edwards out, unfortunately, J.K. Dobbins, uh, Justice Hill, um, even with those guys out, L.J. Fort, they still uh, could do some things this season. So it is going to be a season. Um, and again, it ain't over till it's over. And it is far from, I mean, it ain't even get started yet. Well, actually, it did tonight. Tonight, the season officially started. But Ravens season hasn't gotten started yet. So no need to be like, oh, man, it's over. Oh, man, it's done. Oh, man, that's a wrap now. Oh, man, I'm not watching football this year. You know you're going to watch it. I know you just wanted to add a little emphasis to the comments and stuff, but you know you're going to watch it. You're going to watch the Ravens play. You're going to be thinking about all the players that are missing and whatnot, and it's unfortunate, but... You're still going to watch it and you're going to cheer them on and you're going to hope they do well and they're going to do well. And they're going to make this thing happen. Starts on Monday, team. Keep it clean. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Let's enjoy the rest of the game uh, with these Bucks and Cowboys. Uh, and we'll see how that goes. Y'all stay safe. Y'all stay up. Keep your heads up. Keep positive. Uh, and just keep vibing, man. We out.